but welcome everybody again june 12th i don't know what uh i don't know what day it feels like i just think it's another day to make a bunch of progress and it's been it's been really cool to see how many people have been able to build momentum over the last little while and work we're, we're working as a business towards a big week the week of june 22nd so i know a lot of people have talked about it, it takes but to me i think some of the learning is that sometimes you try and go from where you're at to 100 miles an hour in one week and you can be disappointed but what it takes a few weeks to build some momentum and there's a lot of people that have been doing that for a long time and uh, that's what we'll talk a bit about today is what what people have been doing to get, get the results that they were getting and i think often you know listening to it over the last little while the theme is that it's been uh, a bit of pro like consistent progress over time they didn't just have a magical week and an epiphany it's that a bunch of things came together typically that they've been working on for a while uh, that shows up uh, in, in, I guess, presents itself in, um, you know, in something that's a big week. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk a bit about that. We've got four speakers today, uh, which is going to be awesome. We've got a rookie of the week there, uh, our entrepreneur of the week, and then we've got Owen and Erica to share what they've been doing along the way. So welcome everybody. That's part of it. Um, Madison, awesome to see you. Welcome to your first College Pro town hall um and uh and why don't we start off with uh with our entrepreneur of the week there so joel mr joel warner why don't you take it away you had a you had a monster of a week last week and you built yourself a pretty awesome uh squad out that way so joel i'll, uh, I'll spotlight you here and uh take it away man oh man no thank you so much um yeah i mean momentum's been a been a huge thing and uh obviously everyone goes has their up and downs but i think it's just a matter of kind of trying to I just not not worry too much about the uh the downs and dwell on them too much but um for me I'm a very uh, marketing forward kind of guy so I guess it's just to take you through a path of uh to how how I built the team that I did is I well you're going to be your best marketer right so you every, every single day between 5 and 8 or depending on the covid situation wherever uh whenever the best time is to market, I suggest going by yourself and never stop hiring. Even if you have 50 marketers, it's always good to have other people, you know, coming in and, uh, and filling in the pipeline. So <clears throat> yeah, probably about four weeks ago, I was uh, doing the marketing by myself and just network. I mean, for me, I knew maybe like three people in Calgary. I, I just moved here, but any person, you know, just sending a quick text. I mean, especially during COVID, everyone's looking to make a little bit of extra money. So try and get as many marketers as you can. And ideally you want to transition from the point when you're doing the marketing and the sales and then all the sales from the leads that your marketers are getting to you don't do any of the marketing yourself and you have so many marketers that your entire time when you're out is filled up from doing estimates, right? Um, and then if you keep on hiring and you keep on filling people into that pipeline, you're going to get to a point where you can't even handle uh, the number of estimates you're getting so then you can start, you know, getting one of your, your better marketers or, you know, someone on your team who's a little bit more competent at the whole customer communication aspect of things and uh, just get them to shadow you when you do estimates. Say, hey, you know, I got an estimate at this house. Why don't you join me? Um, and then take them through, you know, the process of how you count the number of windows and screens, what to look out for, what, what not to. And uh, I mean, it doesn't really take a genius to learn how to estimate. And then, you know, once they see you close a couple of deals, they're gonna get super motivated. They're gonna wanna do it. And you essentially make the transition so that they're doing the, uh, the estimates and you're watching them and that way you can give them a little bit of coaching. And if you feel like, you know, as long as they're closing about 30%, there's, there's no reason why, why you shouldn't be doing it. And the reason why is if you pay them on a commission basis, as long as they're making more than minimum wage, you're not necessarily losing anything. And even if you have a higher closing ratio than one of your marketers or salespeople that are helping you out, let's say that they get, I don't know, 25% and you're doing 35. It's not that you're losing 10% of sales, even though they have you know a lower closing ratio than you, you're giving yourself the ability to do an extra 25% more so that the time in between, um, five to later whenever you choose to go marketing is uh, super efficient um and then the other thing i would recommend too is with maybe not your marketers but if you do get to the point where you do want a sales manager 
uh, or someone to help you out with estimates, I'd highly recommend even just for a day, getting them on a window cleaning site and cleaning a couple windows. It helps a lot with learning how to estimate so that, you know, they're not misquoting jobs. And I find it's really, really valuable when they're explaining some of the processes to the customer, because instead of just like thinking, you know, they know the, the process or how to clean a window. Well, now they've actually done it and they're a lot more confident and uh, like understanding something is a pretty, pretty tough thing to fake. So, you know, if they have that prior knowledge, then it really helps them out to uh, create that customer, customer experience, I guess you could say. But yeah, that's awesome. pretty much it. So again, I think some of the things that I heard in there, I heard you talk about four weeks ago, right? Like four weeks ago, I was doing this at this point. And then like I added more people and I added more people and I added more people kind of continually filling the pipeline until you can move that into the next, someone else's, um, I guess, world and, and have them be full, move yourself around. I think, it, again, it sounds like it's a, again, a process for you mm-hmm. um, and it's people. And I think that's in the last three town halls that, um, again, it's just, it comes through all the time is, you as one human you only have so much capacity right so uh, adding a team building more people even if it's not at your level you don't want to just all of a sudden go do that if you're at not at full capacity there's no point in necessarily mm-hmm. adding somebody but at, exactly. getting yourself to full capacity adding somebody in moving some capacity over to using that human resource to, to open up some to take to give your overall organization more capacity uh, and then moving yourself along. So no, that's, that's awesome. And again, just stats, would you book last? I mean, I know, but would you book, would you book last week? Uh, it was roughly around 18 K I think. Yeah. So 18 K external in a week. Yep. yep. Uh, so again, just, so everybody's there, this isn't like putting it together so you can book three grand, four grand, five grand. It will work for that too. But, um, and that's, that's not like a magical week, right? Like that's something that again, I, I say four weeks ago and now what, what do you think you'll book this week? uh i'd say probably minimum around 10 to 12 so again it's going to continue right that momentum's continuing so anyways awesome job sounds like G- sounds like gsnr aaron yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think it's more it, it, it could be i think it's more validating because these are again to me i'm like big big numbers right compared to what some people are, are trying to do right overall and, and that's awesome joel thanks for the uh awesome. thanks for the insight of what you're doing so yeah, thank you the entrepreneur of the week to the rookie of the week Juan, why don't uh, why don't you jump on again? Share just what uh, yeah, just share what exactly what it is that you know you were doing last week to build momentum and and how you were able to move your business forward so much in one week last week. You're on. Oh, Hello, there. everyone. Sorry about that. You're good. I'm sorry right now, so I'll just bring the ladder down. Uh, well, last week I really felt the momentum that I built two weeks ago. And for me, it's all about, it's all about um, teamwork. I really work very close with my team, my techs. There are two girls and they're full marketers as well. So what we do is like we use our time efficiently uh, in job sites and then we take advantage of job site marketing, especially when we beat budget. And sometimes, well, it's a lot about time management as well because, you know, there'll be some times where like you can either choose to cut budget and like finish 10 minutes earlier and like push the day forward 10 minutes earlier or just do 10 minutes of job site marketing. You know, you'll have to, I've come to those situations where like I can either save 30 minutes of production um, in the middle of the day or just like add those 30 minutes at the end and do an hour or two of marketing. So I've been really balanced. I've been really balancing what's been production and what's been marketing. And yeah, I basically go market. I'll try to go market every day after, after I'm done production. And I am also focused a little bit on job site marketing as well. No, it's, and that's, again, one, I think for you, you're talking about, again, like a couple of weeks worth of energy right now to get yourself in the spot where you can go. Yeah, was it last week? It was about, you booked about five grand. Uh, yeah, that, 5.5. And I guess for you, if you had to step around Friday, what do you think you'll book? This week? This week, well, unfortunately, I made a bad decision on Wednesday. And <laughs> I think that cost me my momentum, to be honest. But if I can make up, um, if I can book like 4K in the next, well, if I can book 4K this week, I think I'll be happy. Yep. And I'm going to try to build that momentum back up. And yeah, me and my team really felt it go down because, like, on Wednesday, I foresaw a storm that never came. And, like, well, I had to push back some jobs. 
and well, that was a bad decision because I could have easily worked because there was no storm at the end. But <laughs> well, decisions are made, and I have to build build the momentum again. But it's all right. And again, I think like momentum doesn't get fully lost, right? Like when you're talking about that, and it's learning from it. But to go from five grand to four grand, I mean, that's comparative to what you know I was looking at for you booking one to two grand a week prior, right? So it's still moving it forward and continuing it through. So, um, you know, great job with the job site marketing and using your time uh, effectively and leveraging yourself while you're there, opposed to just, like you said, getting done half an hour early using the, the time that you're out on the job. So great week last week there, one, and uh, awesome to see you starting to move it, move that forward, the business forward in big chunks. Thanks. I would also like to add that um, my marketers, they fully, booked on the spot like I don't supervise them or anything I think like I think that's really valuable to do as well because like when you have three people booking work at the same time you just get a a lot of bookings yep yeah absolutely and again that's kind of like that same theme uh from Joel is just that people right expanding your capacity so really good job there Juan and um yeah love to see that great job uh to talk a little bit more again, uh, we have a couple seniors now, I guess, but I want to start. So Erica, I know you joined us to, again, we were talking with Bailey about some of the stuff that, um, yeah, is that you've been doing. You had a big week last week, a uh, solid week. Sounds like you're off to start again this week. What, uh, you know, I'll pass it off to you. What are some of the things that you've been doing to, to build some momentum and make some progress? Yeah, um, so I'm on like the side of a road right now. So I hope you guys can like hear me. Okay, I've tried to like walk to where it's a little bit quieter. Um, but let me know if it's like super hard to hear me. Um, but yeah, is it okay? You're, you're great. Okay, sweet. Uh, the sun is shining. I can't complain. It's a beautiful day out here in London. Um, but yeah, so I think like some big things that I would say with momentum. Um, I would say the biggest thing is I feel like I've been working on it like since I started my business like last year. Um, And that's the biggest thing for for me, I guess, is just like always doing quality work um, is like the biggest thing for me. Um, I've always, I guess, stayed until, you know, the last window was like completely clean and the customer is really satisfied. Um, And I found that's been really helping and paying off for me this year. Um, And even as a rookie, I feel like that can pay off for you. You know, obviously you didn't have a season before, um, but if you do good work, I think it will, you know, give you so much reference work. And that's what's been a really big thing for me. Um, I've been, you know, training an assistant manager, um, getting my crew up and running. um, And I haven't been able to give the time that I wanted to to marketing, to be honest. Um, But with all of my reference work, I've been having um, really great success with booking work. Um, So even if you just start now, like I think just doing really good quality work is something that has really helped me. Um, I also have hired a marketer. So kind of similar to everyone else. Um, You are only one person and you don't want to bring yourself out. So um, I think hiring help and hiring people to, um, you know, go knock on doors, kind of what uh, Joel was saying as well. Um, I think my time is more valuable doing the estimates than knocking on doors to find out who wants it. Um, I know I'm good at selling and I can get the sales. I just need the leads. Um, So I think if you don't have a marketer already, um, looking at hiring one to help you um, so your time can be more spent on valuable things such as, you know, uh, doing those estimates. Um, What other things I guess I've been doing? A lot of job site marketing as well. Um, Last year, I kind of did job site marketing, but um, not too much. This year, I've really pushed my team uh, to, you know, really concentrate on that. I also, when I do job site marketing, I find something that's helped me is kind of like name dropping uh so before I send my employee out to like go knock on those five doors I say you know the customer's name is like Carol uh for example and they'll go around and they'll say instead of you know we're just doing your neighbor's windows we'll say we're doing Carol's windows um I find that has helped and they'll be like oh yeah like I was over there yesterday talking to her or whatever um I think using the name I find has helped um, get me at least more leads and then also more bookings as well. Um, so yeah, I guess in summary, the biggest things are um, hiring help with marketers, um, using, I guess, you know, uh, the resources with those marketers um, efficiently. Um, I would say something that I've done um, is really try to like stay up with my leads. Um, I know when they don't book on the spot, it can kind of be disappointing, but like make sure you're calling that person back 
Um, even if you like hop off the job site and go like call them, I think that is, what is Jessica saying? Yes, yes, good job, Jessica, yes. Um, but yeah, so I think also using those leads and like calling them back is a big thing. Um, so yeah, I think those are like, I guess the biggest things that I've done. Awesome, again, quality work, that's gonna pay off every time. Like doing, doing a good job is a good thing to do. <laughs> um, people, again, awesome job, Erica, with that and adding more people to the business and follow up. I mean, it's tough to follow up with everybody that you're doing this, the work for, but I love the idea, again, of like getting stuff done on the job site, right? Like to make 20 phone calls, it's like daunting to have 20 people to call back, but to spend 10 minutes every job calling 10 people, you can probably do 40, 50 calls in a day yeah. and it's not more time right it's not tech it's more time but it doesn't all of a sudden magically you're going to finish production at the same time you would have anyway so awesome job erica and it's good to see you pushing it yeah and i guess there's uh one other thing i would add for i guess just like the seniors on right now um this also helps the rookies to make more money um but something that i've done i guess as well is i've been able to upsell so many senior service jobs um by just like looking at the customer's decks and being like you know, this kind of needs to be done. Um, we can do it for you. Um, I actually like about 10 minutes ago, I just booked like a $500 job um, from a lady who was just doing her windows and I got to uh, upsell her on her deck and sealing it. Um, I always mention that and always show them like before and after photos of what we can do. Um, another thing I've been doing, I know obviously that doesn't really help uh, rookies too much with their sales, but that can also get you, you know, um, a little bit of side money for getting all these seniors, those leads. Yeah, and I think even just the I, the concept of like keeping your eye open, right, as to what else what else can I do for you while we're here, right? A homeowner, I think that's a huge service to them. Is what else can we do for you while we're here? Um, it's interesting the answers I think people will get, and people will spend way more time at home this year uh, than they will anywhere than they have any other year. So they'll invest. In their home. So no, great great point, Erica. And again, thanks for sharing. That was that's awesome. Um, and we'll go to Mr. Owen, Mr. Ontario, Owen. So again, Owen, uh, throwing up 80, 80 estimate weeks, really being able to make some progress over the last little while. Um, it's been awesome to see, again, over the last few weeks, you really start moving forward. So Owen, I'll pass it off to you. What, uh, what have you been doing, I guess, to be able to keep that momentum or get that momentum going, keep that momentum going and put up some of the results that you are? Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Uh, so what I was thinking would be useful would be to contrast sort of my business last year with my business this year and the things I've been able to, to do differently, you know, for all the rookies watching this. But I think uh, what's really important to me uh, in terms of the difference is kind of investing in the human capital of your business, if you will, in terms of uh, kind of investing your time in training and recruiting uh, a high quality team around you you know like uh, erica and joel were saying you know there's only uh, so much that one franchisee can do and i know that as a rookie it's really easy to get sucked into production and you might initially feel hesitant to step away from your work it's your business your crew you know so like the quality of the work depends on you especially early on as a rookie but it does become extremely important to be able to use your time efficiently so by spending your time training your your crew to be autonomous and allowing you to step back from production i think is a big first step because you know, when it comes to marketing and generating estimates, like last year, I was doing the majority of the marketing myself for the entire summer. And so when you're spending a lot of hours every single day, you know, knocking on doors, even after you've stepped back from production, it's still not really efficient because, you know, you are doing all the lead generation yourself, all the estimates yourself. So by investing not only in an autonomous crew that can produce whatever you give them in terms of the schedule, which I have two crews this year. Both of them are super independent. All I got to do is give them the schedule on the weekend. I've trained them to, you know, do the, the call aheads to the customers, you know, like make the changes in the schedule they want to get the, the, the locations right throughout the day to keep the day running smooth. Like I've got a really good setup with the crews. They're great. And that allows me to totally step back from production and everything except sort of administrative and scheduling. And then I take my extra time and instead of spending, you know, an extra eight hours a day, not on doors I spend you know eight hours a day training new marketers so what that has allowed me to do is kind of replicate my own results at least you know for the most part in my my employees so I have four really competent marketers going right now and I can just you know drive them to a neighborhood I drive around my turf I scout out houses I drop them off you know at different neighborhoods and I'm able to produce you know like 30 leads every time I have the full marketing team out there so I think 
what it really comes down to in terms of this year versus last year is just like, you know, investing 15 hours in training someone who's going to work 120 hours over the next two months is a lot more valuable than spending 15 hours knocking on doors. So I think the big thing that you want to do is get marketers going, train them, you know, even like Joel said, I don't really have any that, that do sales. So I kind of keep that for me right now, but I'd like to get there and things like that. So just investing your time in, in training your employees has been the big key for me in terms of running a bigger business than, than I did as a rookie. So I would say, you know, you got to get marketers. If you don't have marketers, like job site marketing is great, but you need to have extra lead gen. So I would, you know, go through your hierology, uh, call everyone who applied for a window cleaner that you didn't hire, ask them if they want the marketing job, text all your friends who are, you know, sitting at home collecting the CERB, uh, get them out there, you know, they can make a thousand a month marketing, things like that. So, you know, there's a lot of options on the table. You got to get uh, people going and, you know, doing the jobs that you don't want to have to spend all your time doing. So that allows you to step back and, and be a business owner, be an entrepreneur rather than just, you know, relying on yourself for the most rudimentary elements of the business. So I think that's, that's the big key for me. So yeah, that's all I got. Awesome. And again, uh, Owen, I'm hearing again, people like that's going to keep coming up. Again, what we're talking about with you know Joel, like being able to like uh, have somebody to hand that off to, right? Like you can fill up your capacity, but if there's no one that's uh, capable to hand that off to, then you've got a problem. And I think again, some of the things that I was listening to you is like you've got a actually for all four of them, but it's like the system, right? Like if you've got a system and you've got a system with your people on how they're going to do this, and it's going to allow me to have the space, and then the idea of like leverage of using your time, if you're going to use 15 hours using your time in an area of the business where you're going to get the most leverage and the most long-term results. And that's a really tough thing to do sometimes because often you sacrifice short-term results. It doesn't mean that you get no short-term results, but if you went out for 15 hours and just knocked on doors, you're probably going to get more than if you've got a split focus on training somebody and getting them up and running and letting them do some that's not going to be at the same level as you. You probably get whatever it is, 75% the productivity you would if you were just go you know go all over it for that 15 hours but long term you get 75 percent whatever the number is times 120 hours out of the 15 hours that you had which is a, a really interesting concept it's actually why i think productivity uh, there's a lot more people talking about things like this right now and that human capital as you as you put it um i think is a really cool thing so really great job and it's going to pay off long term like for you long term right so um Awesome. I can't wait to see the size of business you build in 2021. If you learned that from, from 2019 to 2020, man, you're going to have like an, an empire built before 2021 even gets here. So great job, man. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate it. Uh, Tony, I'll pass to you and then we can wrap, uh, wrap up. Well, it, it's, it's pretty clear that I am unneeded on these calls. Uh, clearly unneeded on any of this. Um, uh, a couple things, and I'm going to try and go quick. Uh, uh, the word that comes to mind is experience multiplier. What does that mean? Someone who does $6,000 in a week has learned more in a week than someone who has done $3,000 a week. That's just the math. And I, 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 that's lived with me forever. And then if I get better underneath that and, 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 and have a system under that, which I can help others do, do more, talent times hard work has always won. As, as long as they, what you heard from all, everyone is they outthink it before they act. That's what GSNR is for. That's what your goals are for. And then start act. You know, you are what you repeatedly do. You have to, if you don't feel you have the momentum, momentum, you can start right now. I heard Joel, you know, understanding is a hard thing to fake. That one's staying with me. I'm putting that up on my wall. You can't fake it. Love that, Joel. One. The, the teamwork aspect, the human part of it, the beating budget. Uh, uh, Erica, the quality work always wins. Love the little uh, thing with, with uh, Carol. Both, both the, uh, what, I, what I really saw was the seniors and Owen, the, uh, the hu you know, talking about human capital. The thing that I would, uh, and Owen, if you're talking to rookies, have them think about how they can do year two and year one. With all, everything that you just said, someone should be able to start year two thinking in year one uh, and out thinking all that. So, it, uh, you know, going back to safety first, do no harm, safe and successful. We've been talking about that for all the town halls. Very, very critical. Uh, you know, I have my marker in front of me. I've been writing the whole time. 
you you taught me uh, you taught me a lot, and I I've got to tell you uh, a couple things. Uh, you're already you're skyrocketing, and you don't know it. Like the rest of the world is not moving at the speed right now. If you're moving at speed, um, and it's infectious. If someone has you on a job site, or you knock on someone's door and you respect respectfully work, uh, talk to them, there's a high probability that the world's going to be different such that even into August and September, we're going to be getting work. So well done. Uh, we talked a lot about momentum, but you, you know, a job begun is a job half done. So you got to get, you have to move to move. Uh, no one ever changed the world, not doing something. Um, so thank you. I learned a lot. I wrote a lot of things down. Uh, it inspired, I wish I could get all of you, to talk to everyone at Clear Summit Group because it would inject so much energy and, and positivity because you're getting, you're doing things and you're getting the results. So thank you. Uh, over to you, Aaron. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. And, and yeah, as I said, I think yeah, anyone who's been around, I talk about momentum all the time. I think it's just such a huge piece of it. And uh, the optimistic, positive way that people are working hard, like I think that's uh, phenomenal. Right. Like, I think it's just a, uh, you know, there's no, you can't think about push ups and get results. Um, but you can be optimistic and positive about it and work hard. And that's what a lot of people are doing. So, congrats on the progress on your business. Stay safe, everybody. Um, again, we talk a lot about that, but uh, care way too much. I say it all the time. We care way too much about all of you and your teams to, uh, to not be safe first. So, thanks for all the work that you're doing. Think, uh, congrats on the progress that you're making and the momentum you're building. And if you guys need anything, let us know. Otherwise, have a fantastic weekend. Huge pivot point, I think, this weekend for a lot of people to get that momentum moving into next week and keep building it. So have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to everybody. Uh, weekend, everybody. And we'll talk to everybody soon. See you guys. Awesome.